Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the final day and the final live session of the Northamptonshire Health and Care Partnership Virtual Wellbeing Festival. Hello, my name is Anne Linsell from Northamptonshire Healthcare and my role today is to facilitate this virtual wellbeing festival session. I'm supported here by colleagues shown on the screen. And our role is to support you and to ask any questions you may have of our presenters. This live event is part of a wide range of diverse events running across the week as part of the festival to give us all tips and tasters to help our health and well-being as we continue to work through this pandemic. Before I introduce our closing session, I would just remind you that if you have any questions for our presenters today or reflections on the week, then please put them in the question box and we will do our best to answer these at the end of the session. You can also like questions asked by others. Already within the questions, you will find a link for you to provide us with your email address so we can send you a short feedback form after the event. We really want and value your feedback. Our session today will run for about 30 minutes, which includes time for questions. There is a possibility that it could run over a little, but that's OK. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Chris Oakes, Director of HR and OD at Northamptonshire Healthcare. Thank you, Anne. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, hello, my name is Chris Oakes, as Anne said. Um, I'm the director of HR and OD at Northamptonshire Healthcare. I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you at the end of our fabulous virtual wellbeing event. I'm going to share a few thoughts with you about our journey to how we've come to create the virtual wellbeing festival, and then some reflections on my experience of it. I will then hand over to Toby Sanders, who's the Chief Executive of NHS Northamptonshire CCG. And again, he wants to take the opportunity to reflect on his experience of the week. And then we will hear from Paul Fleckno, who's the Head of Psychological Therapies at Northamptonshire Healthcare. And he will share some information about future wellbeing initiatives that we will have moving forward. We'll then take some questions and at the end we'd like to take the opportunity to take all those who've contributed to running the session. So how did it start? Well, Fountain Gear Healthcare held two wellbeing festival events in 2018 and 2019. These festivals were held at Wicksteed Park with activities and guest speakers, and we had some four or five hundred staff at each event. Can move the slides on, Anne. This gives you a sense, this um, informatic gives you a sense of all the um, things we had available to everybody. For example, we had sessions on mindfulness, on Tai Chi, and also, for example, salsa dancing so quite a varied number of things that staff were able to experience i'd like to share with you now our next slide and this really gives you a sense of the energy that was experienced at the event and in terms of speakers at the first one we had sally gunnell and at the second we had colin jackson and um, they were both really inspirational and we got great feedback from everybody so moving to how we then took that on in a system basis if we can move to that. So there was agreement that uh, we should adopt the Northamptonshire Healthcare Wellbeing Festival for all Northamptonshire systems key workers. And this approach was developed by the Northamptonshire Healthcare Health and Care Partnership People Board. And this involves um, all of the workforce leads from the three trusts from NGH, KGH and NHFT. Workforce leads from primary care, from social care, and also from the voluntary sector. We had planned to hold the event at Wicksteed Park, but unfortunately this had to be cancelled. But there's a real commitment from the partnership to wellbeing. And we talked through that and came to the conclusion that we wanted to take this opportunity to do something really innovative and to create a virtual wellbeing festival. And this was launched this week, which you've experienced, the week long event with all, all of the elements that I hope you've very much enjoyed as I had. 
So let's just reflect on this fantastic week. We've had five days and 15 live sessions, 15 activity sessions, six personal stories and five keynote speakers. And we've got the figures that over 1500 attend the live sessions, but actually on our latest figures, that's now up to 2000 staff, which is fantastic to have had all that participation from all of you. I'd just like to share with you now some of the bits that have really struck me and that I've enjoyed as we've gone through. Um, I've particularly uh, enjoyed the Clark Carlisle session, which was particularly inspirational, clearly highlighting how important it is that we all monitor our well-being. And the big takeaway for me was ensuring that we all take some time for ourselves. I also thought it was really heartwarming uh, to hear his praise for the value of the NHS. From the personal stories, I particularly enjoyed Nick Hillicker's piece about men's mental health. And again, this had a lot of the similar ideas that, Carl, that Clark Carlisle had set, shared. Finally, for me, the Rangan Chatterjee session was really powerful. His key message that we need to make changes that we can easily stick with was really important, both for our physical and mental health. And I think his whole idea of the five minutes and committing to that as something that you can continue to do was really powerful and that resonated with me and that gave me some real indications of what I personally would be able to do for the future. So I'd now I'd like to hand over to Toby to hear some of his thoughts and reflections. Thank you Chris and good afternoon everyone. Hi there, my name's Toby Sanders. I'm the Chief Executive uh, of the Northamptonshire Clinical Commissioning Group and I'm also the Executive Lead for the Northamptonshire Health and Care Partnership and I'm absolutely delighted that the Health and Care Partnership has, has adopted and developed and taken on board the overall wellbeing festival across the whole of the county and for NHFT of doing such tremendous work in starting this journey on and broadening it out across the system this year. Um, next slide please Anne. Thank you. What's really struck me looking at the tremendous programme of events and activities over the course of this week is just the, the breadth and the range of topics that have been covered. Yes, we've had our keynote speakers and I'll say a little bit in a moment about some of the key messages from, from many of them that have, have resonated and stuck with me over the course of the week but also just a huge range of activities that have taken place, um, things that we can take away tips and life um, support ideas for, but also some of the, the physical activities um, and some of the other crafts and things that have taken place over the course of the week. I think just looking there is a reminder again as we get to Friday of the breadth of the ground that's been covered this week. Um, I think we've had pretty much everything on there bar bar potentially one, one area that in terms of um, a lockdown and uh, current activities would have really appealed to me, which would have been a bit of a DIY hairdressing session. Um, but seriously goes, you know, some tremendous stuff there across the whole breadth of areas that affect on our own personal health and our own personal well-being. And I wanted to start by just sharing a few reflections that have come through from, from other staff as we've gone through the course of the week, and then some of the things that have really resonated and stuck with me. Next slide, please. So over the course of the week, um, folk have been sharing their experiences and their thoughts um, across social media. And I'm sure you can recognise some of the faces of colleagues um, on the screen here. Seems to be a particularly theme about dance, um, whether that's been the kind of dance divas, whether it's been some of the soul's work, whether it's been some of the ballroom dancing. Um, clearly, a lot of people have just loved getting active, getting up out of their seats um, and moving their feet their arms, their legs and any other part of our bodies we wanted to shake this week. So um, it's been great to see some of those stories and photographs and experiences being shared. Um, but I wanted to share a few of my personal reflections of things that have stuck with me. So Anne, if you could perhaps just come back to me on screen, if that's OK for a minute. All done. Splendid, thank you. Um, so just in terms of some of the, the kind of key messages that I will take away from this week and, and in particular some of the keynote speakers that I've had the, the privilege of being able to, to dial into and listen. So starting off with kind of Kelly Holmes kind of key messages. Um, for me, not surprisingly, there was a big message there around keeping active and around physical activity and around doing things for ourselves and being kind to ourselves and taking time to look out for ourselves. But you know what really struck me above all of that within Kelly's kind of messages for us was the kind of importance of personal events and personal life stories. 
Kelly talked really openly about her mum's death and about the impact of that on her own well-being at that period of time, about the challenges that presented for her and about how she found her way through all of that period. And, you know, it was just a real reminder for me that in these sorts of moments when we've got so many other things going on in life, so many challenges we're facing at work, supporting the public, our patients and other colleagues of taking time to look out for ourselves, as well as the things that are going on at home and in our family lives. I thought Colin McLaughlin's session was great, the ex-SAS um, uh, soldier, and just reflecting on his messages around, around personal resilience. Um, and not surprisingly, some real sort of strong messages about how he sort of kept things going and coped in some really personally challenging circumstances that most of us find really difficult to kind of imagine. But again, it was perhaps the surprising things in there that stuck with me. His message about personal humour in kind of keeping things going through difficult situations, for those of you who listened or are going to watch into his clips, um, he talked about um, a situation where there was an aeroplane sort of grounded um, on the ground and trying to get eyes and ears onto that plane so they could get an idea of what was going on in that hostage situation. And things that seemed like a great cunning plan at the time about getting telephones on or pizza boxes with cameras in them that just failed the basic test. But actually in that moment, that kind of humour was part of what got them through coping with some really challenging situations. Uh, and Colin's message for me about the fact that we're all the gatekeeper to our own emotions um, is certainly a message um, and a takeaway that I took from his session. Chris and Carrie Carlisle session, um, the footballers, I think probably for me was one of the most powerful and emotionally powerful sessions that I've dialed into this week. Um, I know from looking at the feedback from that session from staff and colleagues across the whole of the health and care system across Northamptonshire that many of you felt the same way. Such a powerfully open message in terms of reflecting those challenges around um, their own personal, mental and psychological well-being. Um, and I think that reflection that we're all somewhere at any point in time on that kind of naught to 10 scale that, that, that Clark talked about, but the importance of us being able to personally recognise where we are any one day and any time of day um, on that kind of spectrum. And I think also for me, taking away from Clark's um, kind of messages, the importance of recognising when, when others around us and ourselves, I think he used the phrase screaming in distress, that when we've got that kind of level of anxiety and stress that's inside us or that we can see in others, how do we recognise that? How do we support people? How do we ask the question? And how do we make sure people can get the right support they need to see themselves through those difficult situations? Hugely, hugely powerful session there from, 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 from Clark and from Carrie. And then finally for me, Dr Chatterjee, um, GP and TV kind of personality. Some of the key messages there again, which I thought were really powerful in terms of the importance of our own well-being and self-care, both for ourselves in terms of how we look after ourselves, but actually the importance of that in terms of our ability to do the jobs that we all do in caring and supporting others, whether that's in providing frontline direct care or whether that's in the decisions that we make managerially in supporting um, our other frontline staff. So that real important message about our own well-being and our own resilience, but the contribution that makes to the quality of care that we deliver. And I think the takeaway message there around those kind of five minute um, daily habits, um, and I've known a number of colleagues within the building I've been working during the course of the week have just come in reflecting on the difference, those little five minute moments to reflect and build some really positive habits into people's daily routines um, have made. And then the final little message for me from Dr Chatterjee that I will take away in terms of one of those little five minute and daily health snack routines um, that he was talking to us about was around the importance of reflecting the kind of impact of loneliness and of social isolation, which has been more than ever a factor during the lockdown period we've all been living through. And I think his message there about just taking five minutes to take some time to spend some time with a loved one, with someone that we can talk to openly and connecting in a way that just puts to one side through, puts to one side um, the mobile phones, the laptops, the iPads, and just spends a bit of time connecting in a much deeper, more interpersonal way with others around us. So for me, just sharing there a number of those reflections, and I know you've all got your own stories and things which have really impacted hugely on you. I'd like finally just to come back to what's probably for me been one of the most powerful pieces of feedback I've seen and heard this week. So Anne, if you could just bring our last slide up, please, for me. Thank you. I hope that's on screen for you all now. This is a bit of feedback that came through today in one of the live sessions um, from a colleague across Northamptonshire. 
who said, you know, absolutely genuinely, this week has been life changing, not kidding. Massive thank you, a you know, huge thank you to everyone that's been involved in putting that on. And I've heard similar messages from colleagues across the course of the week. So I hope you, like me, have all taken something really powerful from the range of activities this week. I hope you had a bit of fun as well, because there's been some real joy moments in all of this. Um, and look forward to continuing to work with you all across Northamptonshire as we move forward. Thank you. Okay, Paul. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity to be part of the closing of the festival. My name's uh, Paul Fleckno. I'm uh, head of psychological therapies at NHFT. I've also been helping to coordinate some of the efforts around uh, providing staff support across the healthcare partnership. Uh, next slide, please, Anne. So I think we've heard a lot already. And I suppose my way of thinking about it is it's in some ways been a whole week of inspiration. Um, and Anne was kind enough to share some of the feedback we've already had. Um, and it seems to me people are already starting to make changes and think about changes they could make in their own lives and for themselves. And I've just picked out a few examples um, and some of these reflect, I think, some of the sort of um, sort of uh, observations and thoughts that um, Chris and Toby have already shared. So people talking about using techniques, people thinking a bit about the importance of that, um, taking a moment to debrief. Um, one person saying that actually following one of the uh, Changing Minds IAP sessions, they realised that they might benefit from that service, so that they've enrolled there. And all of this sort of builds on an idea from one of our previous festivals where we invited people at the end to make a well-being pledge. So at the end of the day, or in this case, at the end of the week, to think about, is there something you would like to pick up from all the ideas and all the inspiration to take forward for yourself? So next slide, please, Anne. So I'm gonna just invite anybody listening um, to think about that thing right now. Um, so if you were just gonna take one thing away that you want to make a change around, that you want to pick up or make use of or change in your life. Um, just have a think about that right now. So what would that one thing be? And it helps to be as specific as you can possibly can be about that. So rather than, for example, see my friends more, um, it might be thinking of a particular friend um, that you want to connect with um, and even asking when you might connect, how you're going to do that. Are you going to phone them? Are you going to do some sort of video conferencing? If you like, what's the plan? Um, who could support you? So is it something you could do with someone else? Um, so if it's connecting with a person, obviously that involves someone else, but, but if it's some sort of activity is the way to involve somebody. Um, or if it's something you're more going to do internally, say it's a mindfulness practice, is there someone you could check in with, someone who could encourage you to do it? And then finally, when would you start? Is that going to be something to do today, tomorrow, this evening? Um, so what we know from sort of all the studies and behaviour changes, the more specific you can be and the more you can involve other people, the more the more likely you are to do it. So what we want to invite you to do just as we sort of run through the rest of the slides is to have a think about this question. And if you want to share um, some of your ideas with each other through the Q&A, um, through the chat box, um, that's available on the screen and uh, we may have a chance to feed back on some of those as we go through the slides. Uh, next slide please Anne. Um, I also wanted to talk a bit about um, supporting each other and, support, and the offer to supporting staff in the system and one thing I think it's worth saying is that it's pretty well established in all the research literature about um, in this case NHS and social care staff but also um, all kinds of people that work, if you like, in the caring professions, um, people that are involved in providing care for others, are often reluctant to seek help even when they need help. Um, and we think there's a few different reasons for that. So one of, the, one of them is related to stigma. Um, so simply that people feel sometimes ashamed or they feel somehow it's not acceptable to need help themselves. And that shame can come from inside us so it's in a way everybody else is fine with us needing help, but it's us that um, feels uncomfortable about it. Or sometimes it comes to come from outside us. So it might be that our perception is that the team or the organisation or the 
social system we're in, it's not acceptable in this particular context to need some help from someone else. Um, also, carers, broadly speaking, are often focused on the needs of others rather than on their own needs. So that's their natural go to place. That's where they spend their time. And because of that, they often feel that they ought to not need help somehow, that they ought to be strong, they ought to cope, they ought to keep going and all those other kinds of messages. And um, I've had a few conversations about while in some ways the heroes kind of narrative that's been around around some uh, NHS and other staff has been a nice thing. Um, at the same time, it can feel like quite a pressure to sort of live up to some of these sort of very idealized kind of images of caring. So the other sort of question I want to put out there is as a sort of whole community in Northamptonshire, um, how can we all make it OK to not be OK, which is a phrase that I know has been used quite a lot around this topic. Um, and I don't have all the answers to this and I don't think any one person would have. And in some ways to make progress around this, I think it's something we've all got to be able to participate in. So one thing is to normalise emotional reactions. So what we talk a lot about in trauma work with people is often what people have gone are going through have gone through our normal reactions to extraordinary circumstances and I think everyone would agree at the moment in all kinds of different ways we're going through extraordinary circumstances um, so it is completely normal understandable expected to to react to that that's what human beings do um, and in some of, some of the specific staff support work we've been doing and in fact a colleague phoned me the other day and said um, a relative of his who's been working in a, a frontline kind of COVID service. Um, they've been worried because in some of their post shift debriefs, people have been getting upset. And does that mean there's something wrong with them? And I was saying, no, it means that they're normal human beings. I'd be more worried in some ways if they were having no reactions at all. Um, the other way that um, that I think has been touched on a lot through the week is really asking um, how people are doing. Um, I had a manager once and uh, we'd, every time we'd meet, he'd say, how are you? And I'd say in that terribly British kind of way, I'm fine, thanks. And after three or four meetings, he sort of looked at me and he said, when I ask you, how are you? I actually want to know the answer. I, I'm not just being polite. Um, and that was kind of helpful. That opened the door to a slightly different kind of conversation. So, so I think however you do it, there's something about how do you let the other person know you really actually want to know the answer to that question and maybe you've got a bit of time and space for that both practically and emotionally. And then the other one which I think has been so rich in the week is how we share our own stories and experiences um, and how we kind of open up with each other about what's going on. And I think that that as well as sometimes benefiting the storyteller but can be a real gift to other people hearing about that. That's in many ways how groups that have been going through difficult situations develop and heal is by that opportunity to share stories and experiences. Next slide, please, Anne. Um, I just wanted to speak a bit. So it may be that some people are thinking and it may be that they've heard something this week that's made them start to think perhaps I could do with some sort of additional support in addition to my colleagues, my team, my social network. And there is quite a wide range of support available and I, I know some of that's all be already been mentioned as we've gone through the week but I just wanted to very briefly talk, talk you through a little bit of that and I'll come to that on the next slide. I think also um, I wanted people to know that there is a system-wide group working specifically on the issue of how we best support all our staff in Northamptonshire um, and that is a mixture of promoting what's already out there um, there is actually quite a lot of support out there, but sometimes I think it's confusing for people. It's difficult to navigate through and people sometimes don't just literally don't know about it or don't know what's on offer in all the different bits. So we've been working hard to try and help people navigate through that. Um, we're working with communications team colleagues on a campaign, what we've called an anti-stigma campaign to, to underline and to really promote this idea of it's OK not to be OK. Um, and I think in a sense, the, the week we've just had has been a fantastic start to that campaign. Um, and we've also started to mobilise support um, for particular teams um, where that's seen as necessary. So as well as the individual support that's, offer, that's on offer, in some cases we are identifying teams that um, we think might benefit from something that's focused on them as an entire team, as an entire group. Next slide, please, Anne. 
So just to talk you very briefly through a few of the things that are on offer, and many of you will know about these, but I will just talk through them quickly. And I've tried to structure them a little bit in terms of um, that dilemma about which way to jump in terms of navigation. So if for people um, who maybe just want someone to talk to, this might be one conversation, it's someone to listen, it's a, in, a in a sense a chance to offload if that's what people feel they need, then there are helplines available that have been set up for NHS and social care staff. So one of those is a general helpline and the details are on the screen. One of those is specifically for bereavement and this seems to be one of the offers that's perhaps not got out there as clearly. So quite a few times I've been asked about is there any support around bereavement and there is a dedicated line for that It's worth knowing that. And for people who for some reason don't want to talk on the telephone or it's outside the opening hours of the other services there is also a text service. Um, if you're looking for in a way something a bit more than that and this might be working with a trained therapist over a number of sessions or you are noticing that you've maybe got a problem that's become a little bit more persistent um, or you want a bit more structure or a bit more guidance um, then our Changing Minds IAP service is absolutely available to all the staff in the county. Again the contact details are there, there's a telephone number, you can self-refer via the website. And as well as traditional talking therapies, um, I have to also offer webinars, some of which you've had a kind of taster of through the week, and something sort of called Silver Cloud, which, which is an online interactive program. And so some of that is in a sort of self-help format, but you get input and interaction with a real life human IAPT coach. So it's a little bit of a hybrid. And then finally, um, for other kinds of mental health support, and that includes support in a crisis, and I, and I think uh, um, some of the speakers this this week have talked about needing help in a crisis. Then we have our reasonably recently set up mental health navigation hub, um, which is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So um, I just want to share that information. And final slide, please, Anne. OK, so um, that's all for me. I'd be very interested to um, hear any thoughts about pledges in the uh, in the quick Q&A. And uh, I think we've now got a few minutes for questions. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, absolutely really interesting to listen to all those excellent reflections and about the journey that you've been on with all the attendees as well. And the key message from uh, Dr. Paul Fleckner at the end there about it's OK not to be OK, that real solid reminder. So we've got lots of questions, some thoughts, and we'd like to put this to the team. So the first question I have for you gentlemen is, will events like these continue to happen across the partnership? So shall I start off on that one? It's Toby. Is that OK, Chris? Well, I'm oh, sorry, I'm my mic. I, I was just going to start if that's OK, but then. I'm fine, I don't like silence. Um, so I think from the people board, as I said, we've um, got an actual um, a group that works within our people board on health and well-being and so we will be looking to build on the work Paul was talking about and with the success of the virtual well-being festival I think it's highly likely that we would want to repeat that clearly we need to plan it in and look at the resources and make it happen um, but as we said at NHFT we've had a success it's been great to do it across um, the whole uh, of the system I think we'll think about whether it's an actual event that people will come to or it's a virtual event or whether we can do both. But I think certainly it's likely you'll see more of it um, and we'll think about the best ways to deliver it. But so Toby, I don't know if you had any more reflections. Just absolutely to reinforce that, Chris, I think that said at the start, this sort of builds on the kind of strength of work that NHFT has done in previous years as the exec lead for the health and care partnership. I think this has been a tremendous week when Angela first came and talked to us as chief exec to say, will we be interested in doing this virtually this year and we'll be interested in making it a partnership endeavour. We all collectively, Simon Weldon, myself, Theresa Grant from the County Council and so on, all stepped in and said, yeah, we, we, we're up for that. This, this, this has got some real value. So um, certainly, Chris, I'd be fully supportive of wanting to see ideas come forward about how we can carry this kind of broader all agency approach on into future years. Thank you so much for both of you answering that question. Our next question isn't directed at anybody in particular. It's asking what does staff wellbeing mean to you and how do you advocate this in your organisations across the partnership? 
Again, I'm happy to start. So I think, well, I think well-being is it's self-evident. We've talked about the de detail. It's about self-care, staff feeling um, that they are well, that they can um, come to work and give fully of themselves, but actually making sure that with the pressures we've experienced in COVID or people experiencing work anyway, that people, as I said, that um, Clark Carlisle message, we, we monitor, but also as organisations, and I think I can speak for all the organisations, that you know that your organisation is there looking to support you. I think the most important thing, again, having heard, um, you know, the praise for the NHS, knowing, as Toby mentioned about the, the, the feedback from the public, um, we're all about the quality of care we're going to give to patients. And I, I do have a, a thing that you, you can't you can't care for people if you haven't got stuff inside to give, if you've not got the energy to give. So actually looking after our patients, although people have talked about what a focus that is for all stuff, we do need to make sure that we have our own well-being so that we can give to others. So I, I think it's essential. And certainly, as I said earlier, within the people board and the workforce leads, the well-being agenda is such a high priority. And, and so that's what it really means to me. I'm, I'm very happy to say a word or two on it, if that's helpful. Um, I echo what Chris has said. Um, I'm quite influenced by the ideas about com compassionate leadership um, and uh, Michael West, who's an organisational psychologist, talks quite a lot about this. Um, and I think it builds on what Chris is saying that um, basically if you look after the staff that work for us, then all the other things that organisations worry about in terms of quality of care um, and in terms of productivity and performance, all that sort of stuff, all of that follows from it. So well-being isn't the add on. Um, well, well-being of staff needs to be sort of the, uh, the, the central thing. Um, and also this sort of notion of compassion. And I really like um, he, every time I heard him speak, he talks about listening with fascination so that you ne really need to find the time and the space to listen to people which sounds incredibly simple but actually if you watch people when they're busy at work it very quickly drops off the agenda because people go into that doing mode so i think finding those moments or those little, little uh, those opportunities to really really listen Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Toby, would you like to add anything to that before I move on? Uh, yeah, happy to. Um, I mean, I to echo the comments others have made. Are the jobs that we all do are difficult, challenging jobs, whatever roles we play in whatever organisations. And if we're not supporting our staff in terms of their own resilience, their own wellness, their own well-being, to be at work, to be able to be functioning effectively, to be on form, to be able to thinking and supporting other people, then we're not going to be able to do the jobs that we do effectively. And I know just personalising it for a moment, um, it's interesting hearing others talking about, you know, models of heroic leadership, etc. Nowhere is that probably more evident than when you start talking about NHS chief executive roles in the NHS. And I know that, you know, we, we all have, and I have, days when I'm feeling up and days when you're not feeling uh, as on it with things whether that's because of sleep, whether that's because of exercise, whether that's because of diet. But I know myself that when I get in those kind of moments, I don't spend as much time listening as I should to others. I'm not focusing as effectively in terms of making good decisions. Um, and yet when I've got that in the right kind of balance, and I know myself how I feel in those situations, um, I know that I can be far more effective in what I'm doing and the leadership and support I can provide to others. And I'm sure if that's my experience personally, I know it'll be that of others as well in terms of the roles that we all do. So um, th this is first and foremost, yeah, central stage for the NHS. If we don't support our staff and our workforce and our partner organisations across the wider health and care system and the voluntary sector, then we're not going to be as effective as we need to be in providing the care and support that we provide to our local population. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, really open and honest thoughts there. Um, I'm going to share a few comments with you and then I'm going to put a question to you all. So we've had some comments, you know, from people saying this has been a fantastic week. The speakers have been amazing. Uh, Louise Goody has asked, will we have access to the timetable next week, next month? And she loved the Disco Divas. Someone has said thank you and well done to everyone behind the scenes and have made this and how they've made this happen. 
So um, as I reflect on Paul's listening with fascination, I'm going to put a question to you all now, which is how do you think the Wellbeing Festival has been beneficial to staff? So I'm happy to start again, Dave. So I think I think with the comments we've heard back, I think it is uh, really important. Um, I think the piece about it's OK to not be OK, but it's also about saying it's OK to think about your well-being. It's OK to think about um, taking time to do that. And I think a number of the feedback from the speakers has been that that, you know, we're all so busy, we've got so much to do, almost unconsciously, we just keep motoring on. And I know I get caught up in that, but actually that whole thing to take a piece of time is, is critical. And I think hopefully what the benefit to staff is that through the virtual wellbeing, through the profile it's got, we're saying to everyone, take a minute, take whatever, actually think about this. And if staff do that, and I think we're hearing back that people are, then that's that's going to be a huge benefit and it, it's a you know it's a building block that you know you you every, all start a journey with a first step so I think if people are taking those first steps then chances are they're going to keep going and we can see that almost exponential benefit uh, and as people have asked we can build on that for the future for everyone with further events and initiatives to support it. Yeah um I can say a little bit just having had the chance to look through some of the feedback already. Um, so I, I think there's a few different sort of categories of benefit that I noticed just from, from some of the comments. So I, I think for some people it's been a reminder or a prompt to either pick back up or reinforce a sort of well-being habit. So some people have been saying yes it's prompted me to get back into mindfulness or I've been for a walk this morning I've remembered how good that feels. I've taken a moment for this, so it's been a prompt. It's been a reminder. I think for other people, they come across an idea they've never come across and they've decided to take it up. So I think I saw some comments about I've never thought about, for example, running before, but this has really inspired me to give it a go. And then I think at a more in a more sort of it, in, internal, emotional, emotionally resonant way, I think in some cases people have had a light bulb moment. So um, one of our comments was about somebody who had never come across the concept of complex grief in reaction to the IAP session and they were saying that completely explained um, something that was going on for them in their own family network and that, that had just been incredibly useful as a concept. Um, and overall, I think echoing Chris, I think there's something about this showing people that um, individually and collectively their well-being is important and I think given all the messaging and the sort of what we know about healthcare and social care staff tending to sort of focus on others, I think that's an important statement in the system to be making. Absolutely agree with both of those comments and if I may just briefly one before knowing I was coming on here this afternoon to, to speak with you all as part of this panel, I actually asked the staff within my own organisation, within the commissioning group, what, what they've taken away and what they've benefited from this week. And one specific, and, and uh, obviously clearly I was really careful not to breach the confidence, but in response to that, one my members of staff wrote me pretty much a full-sided um, response with their own personal experiences um, and described how things they've heard and reflected on this week have challenged some of their own limiting self-beliefs about what they felt was possible for them to do, particularly in terms of how they felt about themselves physically and about exercise and about activity. And as actually said, um, as a result of being involved in things this week, it wasn't so much some of the, the big motivational activity-based Kelly Holmes end of the spectrum, but some of the more personal five-minute chunk exercise activities that they could just do discreetly at home. Um, and that individual wrote to me a really heartfelt response to say, look, for the first time, literally in decades, I've started to make a conscious thought about spending some time for myself each day, just doing something to start becoming a little bit more physically active. Um, and I think if you know if that's there with that one individual who's able to open up to me and share that story, I know that kind of experience is going to be replicated across so many of other other staff. Um, and that for me is the power of a week like this week. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. We've got I've got a few more comments that will kind of um, reflect what you're saying as well. So since this morning's event regarding lower back pain, I've been doing the YMCA while working from home 
and we'll use this in the future. Thank you for all of you who've taken part of the Wellbeing Live event and those behind the scenes. We've got another comment that states, I wanted to say a very big thank you to all involved. I've been off work this week, ill, and I've been feeling pretty rubbish. Decided to tune in today and it's given me an absolute lift in mood as well as tips and techniques that I can actually use right now. I will enjoy catching up on other sessions over the weekend. The programme has been diverse with something for everyone and I have no doubt all of your hard work has been worth it. Now I have got a question that is for all of you and it is can Chris, Toby and Paul share one thing for promoting wellbeing? Is that your, uh, I'm, I'll start again. So in, I'm, I'm assuming that's in terms of your own <laughs> experience and personal well-being. Um, and I think the um, the festivals really made me think about something that I, I, I was minded of beforehand. And that's that in a lot of the work I, I do in, in personal development, there's a real focus on ambitious goals. Set yourself an ambitious goal if you want to change things. As Paul said, be specific about it. But equally, there's that whole New Year's resolution thing. You know, I've not been down the gym. I'm going to buy my gym membership. I'm going to go four times a week for two hours each time. Um, we're full of enthusiasm and then, you know, it starts to wane off. And I think something that I've certainly been thinking about and um, Dr Chatterjee uh, underpinned uh, and others have underpinned, it's, it's actually about consistency. If you, yes, you might have an ambitious goal, but if you make a small change, if you can stick to it and just keep it going, if you're doing it, you know, every day or four or five times a week, even if it is only five minutes, if it's 20 minutes, if it's going for a walk for 20 minutes um, or whatever it is, actually that will fundamentally change what's going on. And I think that's the thing I'd certainly say is think about things you can commit to and stick with and even small changes will make a big difference. Um, Thinking about, you know, a walk in nature, a, a number of the presenters have talked about that. Steve Backshaw and a, a, again, Dr Chatterjee. So it doesn't have to be huge, but if you consistently do it, you will see those big changes come through and then you'll do more. And I think that's the that's the tip I think I'd want to share. So if I may, next. Um, you asked for one, but I'm going to share two briefly, but I will be brief. Um, the first thing is, I think, and we've talked about the importance of, of leadership and of being willing to show a vulnerability and being open um, in all the things that we deal with. And one of the things I've taken from this week and I've already started to put into practice from my own perspective, from a chief executive point of view, is in picking up with chief executive colleagues. I meet one to one on a regular basis with, with Angela, with Simon Weldon and others. And starting off each of those conversations um, when I seen people and I was with Simon Weldon this morning for, for coffee at eight o'clock and we had a bit of a catch up chat and just opening that discussion with talking about how we both are because how we both are and how we both feel at that moment makes such a difference to the conversation we're then going to go on to have. Um, and that's something that I've made a personal commitment to talk more openly um, with that colleague support network about how we're all feeling in roles that can often feel quite isolated and quite um, distant from things. And then the second piece is really about the importance of kind of role modelling um, behaviour in things. And as any of you who know me and who work closely with the commissioning group will know, um, my big thing to keep me kind of safe and sane and balanced is is cycling. Um, and I spend a lot of time whenever I can find the time to just getting out in that kind of mindfulness space. But actually being OK to talk about that at work and the fact that that's an important thing to me um, and that it's OK for other people to be making sure they're taking time to think about themselves and make the space to fit that in. Um, so I'm not always going to be on my emails at eight o'clock at night. It's perfectly reasonable that I might be out for a couple of hours on a bike and clicking in with things again the following morning when I'm back in. Um, and I think that's about how we set expectations as leaders that impact on other people's views about what is kind of reasonable in terms of work life balance in the workplace as well. So two thoughts from me. Thank you. OK. Um... Wow, asking a psychologist to just come up with one tip about well-being, there's a challenge. Um, I was sort of thinking about it. Um, I think for me, there is something about developing the ability to be kind to yourself um, and to be compassionate to yourself. And although in some ways that sounds a bit trite, 
Um, it's incredibly difficult. Um, and I think it's also particularly powerful in our culture. So we tend to be in this country a very self-critical culture. Um, and the number of times over the years that I've done, for example, sort of cognitive therapy where you're trying to get people to identify the sorts of thoughts and often the thoughts that are causing them people distress are self-attacking, self-critical thoughts that we're not good enough, that we failed, that we should try harder, that other people are better. Um, and et cetera, et cetera, often a lot, a lot more um, critical than that. And sometimes I say to people, um, would you say that to someone else? If, if it was someone else, would you be saying those sorts of things? And people often look quite shocked and say, well, no, of course I wouldn't, that would be horrible. Um, and so the obvious question is, so why do you treat yourself like that? Um, and so I think really, trying to develop a kindness to ourselves, not just when things are going well, and perhaps especially when things are not going so well. I think that's a really key part of well-being for most people and definitely for me. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, I was absolutely listening with fascination there because as soon as you said kindness to yourself, it was like, yeah, and it was bringing up all these thoughts about the whole week, um, for how we felt behind the team, as in behind the scenes for the people asking the questions. So thank you very much. Um, I'm going to share some comments, uh, gentlemen, then I'll open it. Uh, these will be the final comments and I'll open it to your thoughts before handing back to Anne. And someone did say, Paul, that they had started mindfulness. So that was an answer to the question you'd asked previously. Uh, we have someone who's saying what an amazing week of activities and support for NHS staff across the county. Thank you for valuing our well-being during this really tricky time, unprecedented, where we are all experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic together. Um, one from a lady who every time I see is always smiling from Janessa, which is thank you. Um, thank you. So an amazing week. Learned so much. Well done to everyone involved behind the scene, to all the presenters and keynote speakers. And the final comment is from a lady who I'm sure is still smiling from the current state of football in the Premier League. And that's from Krishni. And that's great to see our local partnership committed to supporting the well-being of our health and care for staff. Well done to everyone involved. Any final thoughts, gentlemen, before I hand you back to Anne? Um, just, just a few from me. So it's great to hear everyone's feedback and thank you so much um, everyone who's given that. Thank you, as I said, 2000 staff, thank you all for participating because we can put these events on, but actually they really only come alive when everybody gets involved and everybody takes a step forward. So thank you to you all, That that's amazing. Um, and I think the messages we've got, I think we probably did know some of it already, but I think the messages we've got is that we need to do more of this and we need to think how we can continue to push ourselves on and innovate and have some great experiences we can all take part in moving forward because it's just so essential for everything we want to do and essential that we all maintain our well-being to deliver the high quality of care everyone's committed to. So those are my final thoughts. Two final thoughts from me, if I may. Um, firstly, just on a personal note, um, taking part in this at the end of a, another very busy week, on the end of a Friday afternoon. Um, I came into work this morning feeling like a lot of people, no doubt, pretty exhausted after four full on days. Um, I feel more energised and positive and optimistic actually at this point coming to the end of the day, simply because of some of the feedback and reflections people have shared. Um, my other thought is, um, and this has been referenced already, the kind of back catalogue of events and activities from this week is there available online. So if there's things that you've missed, really I would encourage people to go back in. There may be some other speeches and, and some contributions that Chris, myself, Paul have referenced today that you didn't have chance to catch in the week. Um, try and find a bit of time to dial into those because there's some great quality stuff in there. Um, and I'm sure I'm certainly going to be doing some of that over the course of the weekend as well. So thank you all. Uh and then just a couple of things from me. Um, again, thanks very much for the opportunity to be part of the closing of the of the festival. It's really lovely to be asked to do that. Um, and then the only other thought I was having really was please do use the feedback systems or if people want to get in touch with me directly, that's also fine around ideas for how to build on what we're doing. 
Um, so I think one of the benefits of um, developing a system wide group looking at staff wellbeing is it's been become really apparent to me that in the different organisations and parts of the system, there are lots of examples of really good practice and there's lots of opportunities to learn from each other. Um, and I think it's really a key thing with with um, staff support and wellbeing that no one personal perspective has got all the answers. So if people have got ideas and they um, about what's worked for them individually, but also what we can do as a system um, or where some of the gaps might be, I'd be really, uh, I think that'd be very, very helpful feedback. I'd be very interested to see it or hear it. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Chris and Toby. Um, just, it's Anne Lintel behind the scenes. Just to um, answer one of the questions in terms of the recorded sessions, we, um, I don't think we quite got as far as agreeing when we were planning to take those down. So we are leaving them up for the foreseeable future. So they will all be available to everyone to see and to listen to. Um, so I'd just like to play a very short video um, with some thank yous in. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much for all that you have done. Thanks to everyone across the county for all the work that they've done. A massive thank you to everybody right across Northamptonshire Health and Care System. Big thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I just want to thank, really thank the NHS social care and key workers for doing what they're doing. Just wanted to say a big thank you. Thank you very much. A massive thank you to all of our health and care staff across Northamptonshire. Thank you and God bless. Huge thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you have done. So hi everybody, what a week we've had. A fantastic wellbeing week. Um, really proud of what we've done this week across Northamptonshire. So I just want to say enormous thanks to all of you for participating in the activities and sharing your stories across social media about the great fun and what you've been prioritising for yourself. So thank you. As I said at the beginning of the week, wellbeing is so important and we've definitely demonstrated that here in the county. And self-care, as I said to you at the beginning of the week, is important and I hope you've been able to participate and reflect on that as you've gone through the week too. So enormous thanks to all of you, but also enormous thanks to everybody who behind the scenes has put all of this week together. You can imagine there's a lot of work goes into it. Those people know who they are. They know I really appreciate what they've done. And I know all the system leaders would want me to personally thank them. So on behalf of everybody, well done to everybody who has contributed to making this week possible. So final thoughts for me is to say thank you for everything you're doing to keep everybody safe in this county. In Northamptonshire, we're very proud of what we're doing. We remain proud of what we're doing and we know that all of you are playing a role in doing that. So again, enormous thanks on behalf of everybody to all of you for what you're doing. Let's keep wellbeing as a focus. Let's make sure we continue to work together in Northamptonshire. We clearly can do that. We do it today and this week have been examples of that. So thank you very much. Let's keep it going and a real positive focus on wellbeing as we go forward together. Take care, everybody. So I'm just at this point, um, I'm just going to say that um, there is a longer version of that video, which has been the link to it has been put into the chat box. But I'm going to hand over to Chris um, just to say a few final words. Do you want to? Uh? Yeah, I'm just doing it. OK. Um, so. Having had all the great feedback, it's been brilliant to hear that and, and how important it is to you all. Um, but these things don't just happen by accident. Um, people have to put some a lot of time and a lot of commitment in. And I think the people you can see on screen now um, just deserve a huge thank you. Um, Andy Foster and Suze Johnson have 
done a, a brilliant job on all the comms and all the support to them. Thank you to Deeper as well and to Paul and to Owen. Um, certainly we've had a huge amount of IT support that's needed to come through. And then in terms of the OD support, um, Dawn and Dave and Robert uh, have been involved. You've heard them today uh, and it's been fantastic. And I hope they all feel uh, from the feedback that everyone's given just how significant and important the work they've done is. I do need to say a very special thank you at the end for Anne Linsell. She's the head of OD. She's been central to all the virtual wellbeing festivals we've done within NHFT and she's been a key part of making this happen and working with everyone. So on behalf of you all uh, and certainly on behalf of myself, I'd just like to finish the whole virtual wellbeing event by thanking them for everything they've given us and everything they've done because I just think they've been brilliant and fantastic and that experience is represented in everything you've said. So thank you again everybody, hope you have a brilliant weekend, hope you get a chance to put it all into practice, relax, look after your well-being. Um, thank you again. Thank you Chris and thank you, um, thank you for your kind words but I do have, a, a, have to have a last word on this. Um, so as a reminder to everyone, we do um, really, really value your feedback. So if you can click on the link that colleagues have put into the question box and just provide your email address and then we'll be sending out later a short form for you to complete and to be in with the chance of winning one of what we have 50 copies of Dr Chatterjee's book to share across the county. So you have to be in it to win it. Um, and finally, um, all sessions will remain on the website on demand for um, the foreseeable future. So um, it gives me great pleasure um, to uh, not only to thank all the facilitation team behind the scenes who have been absolutely brilliant during the course of the week and um, dealt with all the challenges that we've been presented with, but on behalf of all of us to all of you, a massive thank you for your hard work, determination and commitment every single day. So thank you very much. Enjoy all the resources that are on the on the festival site and enjoy your weekend. Get outside and get into nature and stay safe. Thank you.